Natalie, great to see you. Um, I think the last time a lot of Amazon viewers will have seen you have been in resurfacing, obviously incredible documentary about your surgery and, and recovery from that and very uplifting documentary and obviously the subsequent title run in Antwerp. Can you fill us in on, on what things have been like since then? Yeah, it's been, it's been hard. Um, I've actually found these last few months like in many ways harder than the previous couple of years because I sort of felt like I was going through that same kind of process again. I sort of felt like I was kind of out the other side of really. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's been it's just been tricky because I didn't know exactly what was going on. It's very hard with um, the kind of the metal hip with the, the the scans. Basically, there's a lot of artifact from the metal and the scans, so it makes diagnosing things a bit tricky. Um, and the bone bruise, which I had at the Davis Cup, which um, you know we thought was causing me the kind of issues in my groin didn't seem to be th the case kind of a little bit further down the line and then we were just trying to work out what it was and that meant lots of different scans trying to get to the bottom of it and think we're kind of there now um, and yeah I've been training these last kind of on the court the last couple of weeks which has gone well um, I've been rehabbing and stuff beforehand just no no on court work and no running to try and let the bone bruise settle um, but I don't think that, that was really the the issue. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been tricky. Obviously, you're in quite a unique position in that nobody's had this surgery and tried to come back to, to top level singles the way the way you're trying to. What is what are you hearing? What's the latest that you're hearing from the medical professionals from your surgeon? Oh well, I mean the the most important thing is that the like the prosthesis itself is absolutely fine. So there's no like loosening of that or fracture like of around the the prosthesis which. You know that's like worst case scenario and these are sort of the things that when you're not getting better after four or five weeks of rest that you know you're sort of being told well this is could be what happened we need to investigate this further so you know when you're told that you start obviously you're sort of thinking the worst and if that's the case then that's like you know obviously career ending so it's um it's been difficult, it's just like the emotional kind of ups and downs of just not knowing what's going on and then being given potential worst case scenarios and thinking, well, like this might be it. And then you're going into scans thinking, well, if you get the wrong news basically from this that, that it's done. So it's, it's, it's just been hard from, from that respect. But thankfully, like that's all been really good. And, you know, I've been, like I said, I've been practicing on these courts the last um, 10 days or so and been feeling quite quite well, practice, you know, two, two hours, uh, two and a half hours some days and it's been responding well. So fingers crossed it stays that way. How difficult has it been emotionally dealing with all of that and, and experiencing some degree of pain again? Because obviously last summer it was just so uplifting seeing you just experiencing the joy of, of not being in pain. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that, that was the thing that was, was sort of it was hard because it kind of felt like it was coming from my hip again and you know my understanding was that unless kind of something went quite wrong with the the, the metal is that I wouldn't be experiencing too much pain in, in my hip so you know that was obviously that was the, that was the worry for me these last couple of months and yeah I was I felt like I was in a really good place at the end of last year I was starting to play well I felt fit and healthy and I was playing you know long matches and feeling pretty good and you know I think the thing that I've probably learned um, from that period is that, you know, I need to just manage the, the load um, that I'm putting through my body a little bit better in terms of like, I was feeling so good that I ended up, you know, I played four tournaments in a row, which ended with the run in Antwerp, um, but maybe, um, you know, I should have stopped after Asia or maybe just played the first couple of tournaments in China, taken a week off and then, you know, played in, in Antwerp. So that's something definitely moving forward. I won't be playing four tournaments in a row again, especially if I'm winning matches. It's different if you lose in the first round every week, but if you're winning matches consistently, you know, I, I need to be, be smarter with that. Yeah, that's really interesting, because obviously in the last week, the tennis world has had the, the news of Maria Sharapova's retirement, mm -hmm. and some of the, the comments she used were she said she thought perseverance was her greatest asset, but it ended up costing her in the end. Is that something you can relate to? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, for me, I don't think like the reason why I had the injuries for me was not based on like perseverance. It was probably due to over overplaying, um, overtraining, 
Um, and that's that's a flaw that I've spoken about that a lot of times, um, you know, I guess like as an athlete when you're coming through and when you're playing like you want people to see you as being, you know, a hard worker and you're trying to get everything, you know, that you can out of yourself, which is good in some ways, but if you're training too much and practicing too much and sort of not knowing when it's time to like rest and, you know, give yourself a bit of a, give a break, it, it, it can backfire. And that's something that I wish, well, I guess if I could go back and change some things, there's certainly periods in my career where I would have done less and maybe, you know, played a little bit less. Um, but, you know, when you're sort of healthy and feeling good and stuff, you know, I love playing tennis. So I, I, I enjoy being on the court and I enjoy competing. So sometimes difficult to stop. And that's also where, you know, your team and the people around you have to, you know, step in sometimes as well. So um, I think that's certainly not something I will, won't make that mistake again now, you know, for this last, last little bit of my career. But something I, I wish I'd done a bit different when I was younger. I saw your Instagram post yesterday, the do you give up or keep fighting? I know you're talking about the drill, but it, has there been any moments since Antwerp where you've considered not doing the latter? Not through choice, um, but there was, yeah, there's certainly moments where, yeah, because of the conversations that you're having when you kind of, you know, when I'm not, when I, I'm about four months and since Antwerp now and, you know, about two months after, kind of or six, eight weeks after Davis Cup and I was like, I feel, don't feel good, like I'm not feeling better, you know, what's going on? And then you go and see the specialists and surgeons and stuff and they're saying, well, you know, this is what it could be, yeah, you, you know, you're driving home from those appointments and you, you know, talking to your family and like, I'm, you know, thinking this, you know, it could, could be it. So, yeah, it's definitely something that I've kind of had to think about because of the discussions I've been having, but it's not, you know, not through choice. Like, I don't want to stop playing. Um, and I feel pretty good just now, like, you know, practices and stuff, I feel, I feel decent. So I want to keep playing as, as much as I can. Have the setbacks been beneficial for your golf game? How's the <laughs> handicap? I haven't, haven't played golf since I think it was, it was post US Open last year. Is that right? Post, yeah, post US Open, I haven't played. I get problems with my back when I play golf and I enjoy playing, but it's like whilst I'm playing tennis, I'm like, I need to know, like, I'm gonna put like everything into tennis like these next few years and then once that's done, then yeah, I'll, I'll work on the, the golf game. How is it being a father of three? That's, um, that's been, been hard uh, <laughs> because I spend a lot of time with the eldest too because my, my wife's looking after the, the baby um, and they're, they're at good ages, like two and four, but they're like full on. So yeah, like when you get home from training and stuff and, you know, getting up with them in the morning at 5.30 and things is, uh, is, is, is tough, but it's, it's great um, and yeah. I'm really enjoying it. And that's been the, the nice thing about obviously being at home this period is that I've got to spend lots of time with my family and especially like my second daughter, you know, with uh, daughter number one, we, uh, I was traveling quite a lot. So it was not there all of the time. Whereas, you know, with my second daughter, I've been there for pretty much everything, which has been really nice. And um, yeah, that'll be tough when I get back on the road again, be, being away from them, but it's, it's been good.